excited actually to chat with you just for a few minutes this morning about this very important topic of budgeting. <laughs> it's after Labor Day. We got through Labor Day. That means a lot to a lot of people, right? It does. You know, I mean, there's the seasonality of parks in this industry, as we know, for some people, Labor Day kind of cuts off the active earnings season and they go into the shoulder season and the off season, yeah. during which time they're starting to understand what did we learn from this year and what are we going to do to forecast for next year? So the ever fun budget time. So it's fall of the year, which means we're falling into budget season. Yeah. So and for other parks, of course, you know, they have the flip season. The, the winter time is their busiest time. So they're just getting ramped up for it. But in either case, in, in most instances, if they're using a calendar year, um, then they're going to be doing the budgets this this winter, this fall anyway. So what are we looking at this year different from years past? I think there are a few trends. Um, in, in the course of doing what you and I do during a normal day, we'll talk to any number of operators of several parks and there's been some universal themes this year i think for a lot of folks occupancy has been down a little bit not true of everybody some folks are having amazing years some folks are about even other folks have had a little bit of a dip so the typical stance is usually one of well, do I need to market more? Do I need to drop rates? You know, what do I do? Because I need to make money and I don't have a few, a bit fewer people than I did in a lot of cases. Well, I don't think that's the place to stop the inquiry. So what I'm getting at is the folks I've been talking to are talking about budgeting very different this year. So they're talking about things like on the small end of the scale, adding some component of food and beverage, some form of entertainment could be live local music. Maybe they're doing some golf cart rentals where they haven't entertained that idea before. It could be for parks that can do it. Some folks are in, 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 determining if they want to use day use, just making the park available to people off the street for a day use type fee. So kind of the theme with that, I think, is, okay, so if there's, and really this is the right strategy, no matter if you had a great year or a, a stable year, whatever like that, if I'm getting some people into my park, what does more things they can do while they're here? The more they can do, the longer they might stay, and the more I can extract from that customer for their total stay from different revenue sources. But on the smaller end, we just talked about on the larger end, you know, a lot of folks are looking at investing in some of their sites to create a super premium site. So maybe that's a site that they're going to bring in pavers onto that site, build a large outdoor deck, put some great furniture outside on it and get a premium rate for that, introduce a new rate class. So it's not the same cost as building an entirely new site, but just taking that handful of really good ones and popping them up to the next level. Higher guest satisfaction, higher ADR makes a lot of sense. Um, and of course, some folks, of course, are adding rental units from 200 square feet, which is kind of a popular new size, interestingly enough, up to the 400 square feet. All these things, of course, Evolve does. Um, <clears throat> And just really kind of looking at some of the larger dollar things as a reinvestment in the in the park itself to provide different revenue sources and more stickiness. The more things there is there are to do and the better equipped and better amenitized your sites are, the more they're going to spend, the longer they're going to stay. So that's been the theme this year, I think, is not so much just I have to fix this and I got to do some roads or I got to do something like that. Folks are really thinking, OK. How do I really compete for the consumer dollar? It's with experiences. Mm -hmm. and that's the difference this year. And of course, from the Evolve standpoint, yes, we'd love to talk with anybody going through their CapEx budget and let us see if we can do something to help you out with that in the form of accommodations, decks, furniture, and what have you. As the, as the whole perspective shifts a lot more towards more, more, more things for people to do, we'd love to visit with you about that. So that's the difference this year. What a wonderful thing it is just from an overall business perspective yeah. that you can take a single asset and you can create multiple streams of income because from an entrepreneurial mindset, you know, you might want to go out and buy all these different businesses and you want passive income here and you want to create this whole portfolio, but with a single asset, 
you can create a portfolio of multiple streams of income. And I think people just, they just don't think of it that way. They, they get so um, embedded in their fixed mindset of this is how the income comes in, like you're saying, ADR. And, um, but there's so many things you can do with this one asset. <laughs> it turns into all these different businesses, really many, many businesses like you're talking about. And we're doing it for the right reason, which is to create the experience for the guests. Like Boy, it's, we're here. it's such a beautiful business model. Honestly, it's, it's, it's just the right things and in, in, for the right reasons in all the right ways. Because yeah. when you come to the end of busy, 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 or if you're ramping up for that busy, 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 depending on your seasonality, um, it, it, it's so important to just step back and reflect a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and it's incredible the opportunities that you can have with a single asset. So 